we all know this is my series. It's my bread and butter. It's my jam. And I have a lot to say. I really do. Hey guys, what's up? It's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. And uh, I just need to talk all things Boys of Tommen today. The uh, Boys of Tommen community has been pretty active lately. Uh, there's a lot of rumors, speculations <laughs> circulating around this community. And I need to get all my thoughts out. I need to get my theories out. We have a lot to talk about. All right, this... <laughs> we all know this is my series. It's my bread and butter. It's my jam. And I have a lot to say. I really do. If you are very familiar with this series and this community, you will know that Taming 7 kind of stirred up a little bit of controversy. There was some drama tied into it, but I'm basically going to give you a little bit of backstory before we get into that. So let's rewind to 2023. So Chloe was an indie author. The first four books were indie releases and she actually released Saving Six and Redeeming Six back to back within a month apart of each other. At this time, she had a Facebook group. I was part of it. She was extremely active in this Facebook group. She would constantly share teasers. She would share her writing process and to what my understanding was, was she can write these babies very, very fast. And when Redeeming Six was released, I had the understanding that Claire and Gibbsy's story was being written and it was almost done. Then you flash forward a few months and we get the announcement that the series had been picked up by publishers. Everybody was really excited. We're all getting new covers. This was great for Chloe. The series is getting the recognition it deserves. And they announced that the next book would be Claire and Gibbsy's story. However, this is where people started to kind of get a little bit frustrated. I know I was a person because in Chloe's Facebook group before these were picked up, she had said that she wanted every couple to get two books because it just tells their story better. And Chloe can write some bad boys. And I'm going to be a person that says they don't feel like it. These are very character driven stories and every single little conversation, I'm not skimming. I love all of it. And these are trauma filled books. Every couple has their own sets of trauma that they are going through. And Chloe rightfully wanted to do two books for each couple to get all of that out. So when Taming Seven was announced and it was only going to be one book, people were like, what? And then it was also announced that the deal that she signed was only going to be for six books. Now that included the four that had already been written. So the other two would be Taming Seven and then Claiming Ten, which is Huey and Lizzie's story. Now, this really upset me because obviously I love this story and I love this series and I wanted everybody's story and to know that the publishers didn't care about Feely and the other in-depth, like, I, I want the duets. Every character after this was going to get one book and it was just like, okay, I guess I'll, I'm still going to trust the process, okay? Chloe signed this deal and I'm going to trust it. All right, so then we flash forward to the following year and Taming Seven is released. Now, for context, here are the Blooms editions, so you can see the thickness compared to the Indie. They used thinner paper, so that's why these look thinner than these ones, but for context, look at Redeeming Six versus Taming Seven. And now remember, this is the only material we are going to get for the couple of Claire and Gibsey. Yeah. So when I read this, I vlogged it. You can go watch that if you want, but I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. I was frustrated and the ending of this book did not feel like it properly wrapped up their story. It felt like that was the end of their first part and then we're supposed to get their second part. So when this book was released, things started happening online. Um, for one, Chloe's Facebook group went bye-bye, um, which I get. You know, authors, they need 
authors, they need to protect their space. They need to protect their mental health. And when you have people coming at you like that, when you've, you know, written this for them, not okay. Especially when, you know, a lot of these decisions were probably the publishing company and not her. So from what I gathered around April, when I started looking into things after this Facebook group was deleted, apparently from what I've heard, the rumors circulating around, Chloe was told to remove 60,000 words from this book. Now, like I had said, I was under the impression that in 2023, most of Claire and Gibsey's duet had already been written when she got published and she had to completely drop a lot. And so for 60,000 words to be dropped from just this one book when there was supposed to be another. And also I want to point out that since this is the only book that we're supposedly getting from this couple, why is their book the shortest one? Why does everybody get two and they're long and thick? And Claire and Gibsey get 400 and some pages. I ranted about this so much on my Instagram story because if you look at the context of the duets, Binding, Keeping 13, Saving, Redeeming 6, both of those couples probably have 12 to 1400 pages to tell their story and Claire and Gibsey get 450 pages. No, I don't think so. There was a lot of backlash to Taming 7 and I was frustrated too. Like I said, I, I loved the book because I love the characters. But there were things that frustrated me. There were things that felt empty. There were things that like, there were missing things. So basically you unmask Gypsy's trauma at the end and then that's it. And I also wanna touch on the fact that the vibes of this book felt different than the other four. And I'm going to explain why. When Blooms first revealed their covers and their spines, I had gripes with this and that is young adult. So Blooms is marketing this series for young adult. If you look up the young adult genre on Google, it says that it is ages like 12 to 17, 12 to 18. I don't know about you, but I would not want a 12, 13, 14 year old, maybe 15 even reading this stuff. Now I get why they would think to put it in YA because it is about high schoolers, but the topics alone, just no. I was actually in Barnes and Noble about a month ago and my town has two of them and one is a little bit further away. And I decided just to trek there just to see what options they had. Now the Barnes and Noble closest to my house, the Boys of Tommen books are in the adult romance section as they rightfully should. When I went to this other Barnes and Noble, they were in the YA section and I just happened to be shopping when a mom was shopping. She was looking for new books for her seventh grade daughter and these were like displayed right on the front and it said cute fun sports romance like under the card where the um, employees write something and she starts looking at it and she actually asked me, she's like, have you read this? I'm looking for stuff for my daughter and I'm like, well, how old's your daughter? And she was 13 and I was like, and I told her what was in these books. I told her about the drugs and parental abuse and a lot of things. And she put it back and she's like, this shouldn't be over here. And I, I totally agreed. And that, you know, that's just a rant I could go on for a while. But anyway, the tone of this felt very YA compared to the first four. Uh, for example, the spice between Claire and Gypsy. It felt very kind of closed door. Like it, it just... We didn't like, I don't know. I don't know how you go from Joey and Aoife and all the details of their love to let's just go in a tree house. Let's laugh about it because things happened and then we'll just kind of fade off into the page. I don't know. It just really felt like Blooms was telling Chloe that from now on with the rest of your books, we're going a YA route and people weren't happy about it, all right? I know I wasn't, I know a lot of my friends weren't. I have yet to find a person that did not find flaws in this book. That's all I'm saying, all right? But that was like the very long backstory, but I really needed to do that to set up where I'm going. So we flash forward to now and about a few weeks, maybe a month ago, a lot of people started to notice, Chloe started becoming very active 
in her Spotify. Now for reference point, when I was in her Facebook group, she used her Spotify a lot. Um, when she would when she would give teasers in the group, she would often drop songs that would say, hey, this is totally going to be these vibes. And then also when she was writing a book, like when she was writing Redeeming Six, she had a playlist that went along with it. So when I was getting ready for that release date, I was constantly listening to a Joey Lynch playlist just to get the vibes of what that book was gonna be like. And so about a month ago or so, she really started updating her Spotify. So she, when she deleted her Facebook group, like she stopped going online. She stopped going on social media, which like I said before, is fine. Authors deserve a safe space, okay? And if they need that safe space, they deserve it. And so only her assistant has been like posting on her Instagram. So it's been just very generic posts like, hey, this special edition is coming out here or hey, don't forget Chloe's other books here. But really we haven't gotten anything since Taming Seven because of all that backlash. So people started to notice on her Spotify, she was naming the playlist certain things. And if you click on the playlist in the description, she was actually posting full on teasers like dialogue and descriptions. And some of the dialogue that she's posting are in Gibsy and Claire's POV. And it also has the caption healing seven. Okay, so let's go back. Let's rewind back to 2023 when Chloe said every couple was going to get two books and that she had written most of Claire and Gibsy's duet. So here are my thoughts and my theories based on this picture right here that was recently posted. Okay, we have T7, C10, H7, and R10. This is Chloe telling us what the order of the books is gonna be. And I actually really like this because she's telling us she's still going to give us the duets whether that be indie or the publishers i don't know but i i think we're still she's telling we're getting it in some form or another so this is how i think it's gonna go and i'm really excited for it so obviously we had taming seven claiming 10 is next on the docket which is huey and lizzie's story and it was really set up in taming seven there was a lot of huey and lizzie which upset a lot of people but i am a huey and lizzie stan i know that's you know controversial especially in the reddit group but i love them and they were really really set up and at the end of taming seven there's this huge fallout where there is a divide between the group and we're supposed to be getting claiming 10 next and according to this picture then we're supposed to get healing seven and then releasing 10. So what I'm thinking is instead of the way that we got the first four duets back to back to back, we're getting these duets, but they're gonna correspond with each other in the timeline. I created a tandem guide for the first four books. I vlogged it, it was fun. It's on my Instagram if you want it. But Chloe writes this series in a way that the timelines are corresponding with each other. Um, like in Taming Seven, we kind of go back to the summer at the end of this one. And so you see the same things that were happening in the group, but you see it in other characters' POVs, which I think is important because every person out there, we view things differently, right? So I think when we get Claiming Seven, we're gonna rewind and we're gonna go back to the start of the school year again, but we're gonna see everything in Huey and Lizzie's perspective. And the reason that I think this is gonna happen is because like I said, Taming Seven had so much Huey Lizzie context to it and it was like a big mystery. Like Huey was like depressed and sick and sitting in the dark and Lizzie was just off a whole other bender. And I really think in Claiming 10, we're gonna rewind and we're gonna get that side of it, of what was happening. And then when we get to Healing Seven, then we're gonna go back to Claire and Gibsy, get that side of it, and then we'll go back to releasing 10 and get more Huey Lizzie. On the Spotify, there is a theory that Lizzie is gonna leave school at the end of Claiming 10. I can see that happening. That girl, she needs to heal. And I think if she takes time away from the group, that's gonna happen. And obviously there is so much in that love triangle alone. 
or love square with feely and katie and we're gonna see all of that i think everything that happened in taming seven on that side we're gonna see it in claiming 10 and i'm gonna do another tandem guide so i think taming seven claiming 10 healing seven releasing 10 i think they're all gonna correspond with each other and they're gonna take place like this first half of the school year now chloe also released these playlists and i think this is her telling us that these are the books that she wants to release. So she also has on the docket Feeling 12, Trusting 12, Adoring 13, and Runaway 15. Now, obviously, that would be uh, the 12 duet, which would be Feely and Katie. We got a lot more Feely in Taming 7, and I'm liking him the more I learn about him. So that's going to be a fun duet. Adoring 13, Chloe had talked about on her Facebook group years ago. Basically, that is going to be a Johnny and Shannon novel in the future. When they are adults, they'll kind of get a proper happy ending, like after going through everything, growing up a little bit. And then Runaway 15 is supposed to be a prequel about Johnny's parents, John and Adele. And if we remember from Johnny and Shannon's story, Adele tells Shannon and Joey that she had a really rough home life and John's family kind of took her in similar to the lunch situation. And that would be a pretty big epic love story as well. Um, another thing I want to talk about also is Chloe has been releasing new characters names that correspond with Tig's class, Tig Lynch. And that makes me think that maybe we could get a Boys of Tom in next group series. I don't know. But there is a lot. And Chloe is feeding us a lot on this Spotify alone. But yeah, that's that's basically it. Those are my thoughts. Those are my theories. I <sighs> bless Chloe for finding a way to communicate with us. I have to say. Now we really don't know exactly what the facts are we don't know what is going on behind the scenes but i my personal theory like i could totally be wrong seriously i really could be wrong but my personal theory is that this caused a lot of backlash to the point where there is reconstructing going on behind the scenes because originally when these were picked up by the publishing companies they had announced that we were getting this in april and we were gonna get claiming 10 in october and like i said since this released there has been radio silence except for you know we would get a, the occasional just like snippets of this and then um the release of the blooms special edition binding 13. that's all we've gotten and so i really think i think i hope i don't know Chloe stuck up for herself and her series because she put her heart and soul into this series and you know without like going too deep into it you know if you know a lot of Chloe's backstory you'll know she lost a child and she lost a child after writing the 13 duet and from my understanding she never wanted she didn't want to go back and write again and she did she got the inspiration and she gave us Joey Lynch's story, which is still my favorite story to this day. Joey Lynch is my favorite book character and no, no one has changed that since. And so for her to map out this entire series and have so much of it done already, and then for supposedly the publishing company to say, no, we just want two more books from you and we only want them 400 pages each. No, I just, there's something special about this series for a reason you know it's like i said on my instagram when this book came out in april i get traditionally published books romances they don't need to be long but in certain cases they do this is not a small town romance where we get things resolved in 350 pages first of all this is book five in a series we have trauma going on very big trauma and it needs more than 450 pages to tell its story decently okay that's just my opinion all right well uh thank you for sticking around for me while i ramble on about boys of tommen chloe walsh all of my theories like i said i could be totally wrong and then we'll be laughing months from now weeks from now i don't know hopefully we get some kind of actual announcement soon 
until then i am stalking the spotify page like crazy but uh anyways uh let me know your thoughts down below let me know what you think is gonna happen let me know what your thoughts on taming seven were just let me know your thoughts in general on the series i love having conversations with people about it uh anyways don't forget to hit like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time bye